The second Triple Crown race of the season is Arlington round number eight on a beautiful evening at AT&T Stadium. The 450s taking center stage after a tremendous opening ceremony. Fans packed in their seats, ready to witness some greatness, and they didn't have to wait long. No, they didn't. This Triple Crown format always producing, and and that right, that right hand first corner is certainly tricky. Track really held up well, but later in the evening it got very difficult. Marvin Muskan makes the early move, but this would not last long. It didn't, and check these guys out. I don't think Anderson was anticipating Malcolm to be there. He came up there really quick. I don't believe any contact was made. But something happened here because Marvin Muskenia, yeah. he stalls it right there. And then from that point on, he just starts going backwards. And uh, I mean, he really faded, faded back. And Quickly. I think, yeah, I certainly thinking that something was wrong. Malcolm Stewart was happy to oblige and take over the lead as he moved out into the front position. And look oh. at this again. We saw this with Brayton and Fernandez, similar to what we saw in the 250 class. Yeah, yeah, no doubt. I mean, he just come out of that corner, railed the berm, and then boom, runs right into the back of Brayton. And closing in speed is like something you see in four wheel racing. And this was the moment that a lot of people will be talking about here in race number one. Anderson. Well, Anderson, mm. we heard from Anderson. He said he was going for it. He's like, oh no, I grabbed the handful. I don't think uh, Malcolm was very happy about that, rightfully so. They both had a great race going and ultimately both lost from that decision. Barsha would take the lead, and then it was Cooper Webb taking it from him. Well, it's a little bit of that two-time Monster Energy Supercross swag that we've seen in <laughs> years past from Cooper Webb. He got the job done when he needed to, especially that first round. Race number one goes the way of the two-time champion, Cooper Webb. Looked like he was all but out, and yeah, there was still some talking to be done as Malcolm Stewart was not happy with Anderson. They were running one and two. Attention now turns to race number two, and. Eli Tomac out there lurking somewhere, a much better start for him. He's just really consistent, and of all the people in the field, he has the best winning average in this Triple Crown format. So, cool, calm, collected, doing exactly what he needs to do. Yeah, with Sexton out in front. Great battle here between the 21 of Jason Anderson and Eli Tomac, and this thing, Ricky, would last uh, a good 10 minutes. Well, it was good. They raced hard. They definitely raced hard, but it uh, it was clean and good fun racing to watch. Sexton now with the lead, and that would end here shortly as Jason Anderson really feeling good on that green bike. He's been impressive since uh, the first time I saw him ride it in yep. person at the opener in Anaheim. The Monster Energy Kawasaki Pro Circuit ride has him in good places right now, and then Sexton's problems get worse as Eli Tomac comes up, checks up on him and gets the pass. Well, he does, and he has to bring Chase Sexton out to the bales to be able to execute and actually make the pass stick. Jason Anderson looking very good as he gets some clean dirt in front of him, and he would bring it around for race number two and the win. So a disappointing performance race number one as he gets collided with Malcolm Stewart, gets the win in race number two, and it all comes down to this, Ricky, once again, just what you wanted, a showdown in race three. Yeah, basically all or nothing for these guys, and what a start by Shea McElrath on that number 12, RockyMountainATVMC.com, ATM. Oh, McElrath. yeah, look at that. That was good. I thought that was a little bit of yeah. retribution from Malcolm Stewart. Could have been a lot Ooh, worse, and there were some major problems back. Look at Cooper Webb. He gets yeah. tied up. You're thinking, oh, his day, his night is done. Well, yeah, unfortunate, because normally Cooper Webb's able to re get, get a good start in pressure situations, but he just got uh, a little bit behind there. Also, that's that's Ken Marvin Roxon. who's in. He's yep. caught in the back of Ken Roxon's rear tire and rear fender. He's, you can see him stuck, and man, this has just been a horrible yeah. season other than that opening round win for Ken Rocks and he definitely isn't the guy that he was. It was the pass on McElrath, Eli Tomac now working out into front. Well, and, it, and I thought that Eli might be able to open up a little bit of gap, but you know what, Jason Anderson, yeah. Anderson just riding too well. If Jason Anderson wanted any hope of getting the overall win tonight, he had to get past Eli Tomac, and you had that sense, that urgency that he had there. He wasted no time just trying to reel Eli in, and when the time was right, he made the pass. Well, he did, and he made it quick. I mean, he was a lot faster in the whoops for the most part on an average, but uh, just great battling. 
going back and forth, cat and mouse. Now, when you're watching this, Eli Tomac didn't have to win the race right. to win the overall. So, you know, no, no reason to really force the issue. But now I think he was able to go to school, maybe learn a couple things, because when he got, got past, he followed him. He followed Jason Anderson. Check this out. Oh, Ferrandis takes him down. Ferrandis extremely frustrated. This has been a tough season, Ferrandis. I, I certainly expected a lot more out of him, and he's had a rough go at it. Connection with Barsha there, and meanwhile, Anderson out in front. And this was a thing of beauty. The fans here in Arlington treated to a great seven, eight minutes of racing. Going back and forth, and Eli just sitting there hounding him, hounding Jason Anderson, but wasn't able to get it done. And to your point, Eli Tomac knew that he did not have to win the race. It would go the way of Jason Anderson, so he gets the two ones. But it was the first race that cost him points. And it is Eli Tomac on the night that gets the overall. So two triple crowns and two winners being the same. Eli Tomac as he turns his attention now to Daytona. And one more triple crown race still to come in St. Louis.